Major support for Do The Math has been provided by Chevron, the Kern County Superintendent of Schools, Edison International, Kern Schools Federal Credit Union, California Resources Corporation, Bakersfield West Rotary Stroop Family Foundation, Panama Buena Vista Union School District, Bakersfield City School District, and the Kern High School District. With additional production assistance provided by these supporters of education in Kern County and throughout the state of California. We're here today at Panama Elementary School, home of the Yellow Jackets, and today we're all here to... Do the Well, good afternoon and welcome to Do The Math. I'm Michael. And I'm Scott. And in studio with us today, we have Mateo. Mateo, if somebody wanted to get a hold of us at Do The Math, what would they need to do? For math homework help, call in Bakersfield, three, no, 636-4357. Toll free, 1-866-636-6284. Email dothemath at kern.org. We're online at dothemathonline.net and on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. Are there that many ways to get a hold of you? Um, hmm. <laughs> I mean, you're thinking, all right, let me see, you can get a hold of me this way, this way, this way. That's a lot of ways to get a hold of us, isn't yeah. there? Well, you know what? There are a lot of ways to get a hold of us because sometimes kids can't always watch the program live. So what they can do is they can email us problems. We've done that before. Most of the students that maybe have grown up with us or maybe you're watching it, maybe don't have cable anymore so they can watch online and then a lot of students are always doing social media things mm -hmm. and then they see things on Facebook or Instagram or whatever and they're like, oh, check that out and then we'll do something <laughs> like that. And there's another thing that's going on. Do you know what's going on today and tomorrow? Um, today and tomorrow. There's a lot of stuff going on. Yeah. I mean, I didn't tell you anything, but <laughs> anything big going on with you today or tomorrow? Uh, well, today I do have a music concert. Oh good, nice. that's coming up later on this evening? Yep. Well good, congratulations, I'm sure you'll do well at that. But for Do The Math today and tomorrow, if you guys phone in and we do one of your math problems on air, you'll automatically receive two tickets to Holiday Lights at Calm. And you can see some of the footage right there. And that is quite the uh, extraordinary show, one of the best in the West, one of the top 10 shows in the Western United States. And it has been modified, we learned a little bit about that last week with Steve Sanders. And that is going on all the way through until, I think it's January 4th, mm -hmm. closed every, only Christmas Day. Only That's Christmas the only day. day. That's right. Every other day you can head out there. I think it's 5.30 to 9. So you do have an opportunity for that. You ready to do a little work? Yep. That's why you're here. All right. Over to the board, young man. So you have been working with positive and negative numbers. Yes. So I'm going to have Scott put a couple of numbers up there. Let's go 49, negative 20, and then negative and in parentheses put negative 29 and the last one we'll put is 41. Now Mateo it says find the opposites of these numbers so kind of explain to Scott what you're going to do and what the answers will be. What I am going to do is I will do the opposite of what you would do instead right. of the opposite of positive 49 it will be negative 49, and for negative 20, I will put 20. Okay, go ahead and grab that red pen. Let's see if we can work on a couple of these here. So the opposite, you're changing the sign. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, instead of it being higher for this one, it's lower. Okay. And for this one, it is higher than negative 20, and this one is... Mm. Now walk me through this. What does this mean, negative, negative 29? What, what the heck does that like mean? It's like negative 1 times negative 29, which ah. is 29, so okay. it's still Okay, so let's do that first. 29. Go ahead and put yourself a 1 right here, okay? Invisible 1. Uh-huh, that's right, good. And then negative 1 times negative 29 equals, equals what? Actually, positive 29. Good, and then the opposite, you can then take it. So I like how you simplified those two signs there, because otherwise some people look at those two signs and go, there's 
too many signs. And for 41, it is negative 41. We didn't even hardly challenge you on that one. How about this one? I have oh, one, easy, one easy. Last one now, that's just the uh, beginning of the problem. Okay, we got more to do. So he's got the opposites. Now <laughs> let's put them together. So, Scott, what I'd like you to do is just give yourself a little bit more room. Okay. And let's put those in order now. So let's go 49 uh, okay. minus 20 minus 29 plus 41. And let's go ahead and evaluate that now. Oh, so, look at that. We're going to put these all together. I know. <laughs> so 49 minus 20 is 29. Okay. Minus 29 equals 0. Okay. Plus 41, which equals 41. Wow, look at that. That worked out pretty darn well. Nicely done right forward. there. So, good I work. wanted to give you one that was nice and easy, comfortable, something that you were good with right there, so that's the beginning of today's show. Are you good with that? Yep. All right, nice. We'll come back done. in a minute, I'm sure. Hey, we do have phone tutors available until 5.30, as we do most Tuesdays huh? and Wednesdays throughout the regular school year. Today and tomorrow, December 10th and 11th, the final two days, though, for live Do the Math, where you can phone in. Otherwise, we'll be off on the uh, holiday break until the beginning of 2020. Time now for today's Math in the News. All right, today's Math in the News. We're lucky enough to have a couple of studio people in here with us. Today we have <laughs> Justin, and Justin, you're with McFarland High School, and your role there? I'm the principal of McFarland High School Early College. All right, and also we have Maria, and Maria, what is your role with McFarland High School? I am actually the CTE specialist for McFarland High Early College. Okay, so some students out there are listening going, all right, so CTE, what is that? Okay, so CTE, for those of you who do not know, it stands for Career Technical Education which means those are the jobs that are more hands-on related directly to career. Okay, because students a lot of times they're good in school and they're going, you know what, I'm not do, doing too well with school, like school subjects and things like that. And I know I have skills in other areas. Exactly. So is that kind of what Exactly. This is? So there's, there are some students that maybe college, they don't want to take that traditional route and they can go ahead and take um, CTE courses. So McFarland High School Early College does offer seven official CTE pathways where they can obtain their Certificate of Achievement from Bakersfield College while they're in high school. Okay, now McFarland High School, as the principal, you're kind of overseeing everything that's going on. That is correct. How did McFarland High School get involved with this and how are they going forward with it? Well, there's been a lot of grant programs throughout the state, such as the CCPT1, CCPT2 grants. I know I'm giving a lot of acronyms, but there's been a lot of support through the state itself for career technical educations. Uh, tech, uh, career and technical education classes. So what we've tried to do is a little bit different from what most schools have done. There's been a lot of support for ag business, but there wasn't a lot of support in other areas. Okay. So we as a district decided uh, that we, instead of uh, becoming more ag-centered, we would provide a certificate in ag, but spread out that wealth so there was a little bit more equity uh, across the board for all students so that we could have business, ag business, welding, logistics, um, computer science, uh, CAD, computer aided design, okay. uh, photography, fine arts, uh, everything, education and health, public health. And my next question for you, how many students are in this program? Every in single program? So they're all in it all of them. one way or another? Yes, yes so right now we have about four to five hundred students that are enrolled in dual enrollment classes out of the 992 at our school site and every year all incoming freshmen will enroll at Bakersfield College and become a Cougar Renegade. Oh good, well you know what, one of the programs you brought up was welding, and I think we have a little bit of footage about that right now. Yes. So we'll take a look at that, and Maria, if you can talk a little bit about what we're looking at with the welding program. So what we are viewing right now are a couple of the projects that um, some of our welding students have completed. Um, welding is actually, actually one of our most popular pathways. Um, even among female, it seems to have grown a lot from when I first started, I would say maybe just one to two females per course. And now it's at least four, four females per course. Um, a lot of our students have done a lot of different projects. As you can see, um, they did a competition on who could build the best bench. Okay. And they actually did that versus their welding instructor. <laughs> and the welding instructor lost to one of our students. Well, there his, you go. His had cup holders. Well, then his job was done beautifully, right? He was able to get those guys <laughs> exactly, to make a nice exactly. bench right there. So tell us a little bit about the photos here because there's a special recognition going on here, if you guys want to talk a little bit about that. 
Absolutely. So we were approached by Romeo Agvalog. Um, he had visited our campus a couple of times and he really enjoyed our welding program and a lot of the projects that he saw. So we were actually asked to create the Impact Award trophy for former Senator James Bowler. So if you can see there, those are some of our students who actually helped create that specific trophy. Oop. And one of them, of course, as I mentioned, is a young lady. Some of our top welders are actually female. And there she is right there. There she is the working on that above, trophy. And working on that. And there's King Fuller right there. King Fuller that. accepting her well-deserved award. So we actually have the McFarland USA Half Marathon that we do at, uh, within McFarland with the McFarland uh, uh, with the McFarland uh, Track Club. Uh, what they do is they host that every year and they've actually asked us to create the trophies for that as well. Um, we utilize a lot of our welding equipment to create a lot of things throughout the school. Um, some of the signs for all of our campuses and whatnot have all been created. Now this is a visit from TJ Cox, Congressman TJ Cox. He came to our school site and we don't allow anybody to leave our school site without a <laughs> gift from our welding department. <laughs> Uh, on the bottom left hand corner there, that's a flag that was created uh, for Veterans Day. We have a Veterans Day dinner every year. Uh, we like to honor our veterans, especially those that work for our school district and from uh, within our, our school and our city. Uh, and that was a, a raffle gift that we gave away to one of the veterans during the dinner. Oh wow, very nice. Yep. <laughs> okay, there, that's special no. right there. Um, I'm from Philadelphia, so I moved oh, here about so you're 14 Philly years boys, ago. So big game last night. Yeah, big game. We pulled it out. You know, oh, like they, the Dallas Cowboys who have all the talent in the world and can't win a game. Oh, we have no talent. That. You we know what? I know out, we so. just met earlier today, but do you know where I'm from? <laughs> where are you from? Um, I'm raised in New York. <laughs> oh. Gotta love those G-men last night. Uh, oh, uh, uh, and I see sorry. my boy Eli come back last yeah, night a little bit. But you know what? That was... It was an entertaining game. It made me nervous. I really didn't think the Giants were going to pull it out, but I thought, well, you guys have a shot at this. We did when we went to overtime. So yeah. they, what, what actually happened is this: they created this for my son's bedroom. So that okay. actually is a sheet of steel that's hanging on my son's wall. And you, how have you got that hanging? Uh, I mean, how lot, so? <laughs> yeah, I didn't even use that's in the garage, but actually okay. the cutouts... All I right. took those and put them on my son's wall and actually made it as a decorative piece. You, and I, you know, you pay the welding uh, for a fundraiser and they create a lot of things for you. So this, a little photo contest. Yes, so we actually attend every year. It's called the Jostens Renaissance Fair for our yearbook students. Uh, one of our students actually placed third in a national photo contest and this was one of the photos that was actually taken at the Jostens Renaissance Fair. Oh, all right. So that's, uh, he went and he, he dived in the students, and <laughs> our student was just right up in there. So. And these are all um, our students that are in our photography and fine arts pathway. Okay. So the uh, they take five courses throughout their time that they're within the uh, high school, and they can walk out with 17 credits of early college, dual enrollment credits. And their certificate. And their certificate mm -hmm. of completion. This was uh, women in. Trans no, this program. is actually our education pathway. Oh, yes. These students read uh, Freedom Riders and were actually able to go to BC and meet Aaron Gruwell, who was the main um, focus of the publication as well as the um, movie. And the Education Pathway students actually work with our elementary school sites twice a week. So what we do is we bus them to three different elementary schools and they actually work with the teachers hand in hand in teaching our, our young uh, students within the district. Okay. And that's still them right there. This is our computer-aided design classroom. So uh, we have four courses that we do within our pathway for completion through BC, uh, where the students will start where they're using just pen and paper, or pencil and paper, and then work their way up into the actual um, uh, the computers and creating um, blueprints and whatnot within the class, and can earn their uh, 17, 17 credits for the computer-aided design engineering pathway, um, hopefully using that skill to roll over maybe to Cal Poly or to some of the higher end uh, engineering schools. And, you and here they are the going to the next do. step right there, right? Right, that would be one of our more advanced classes. So they start off manually and then they could go to 2D and 3D. Right, which is something I think that they need to do, get it manually so that they understand what's going Absolutely. in in that design and then be able to input it into the computers and then go to the next step. Uh, a lot of times, I'm, like students like Mateo and things, when they're younger, using a calculator is good, it's a tool, but you also need to know what's going into it and how yep. it's working. So exactly. the same thing with the steps that you guys have going on here. And what's great is actually within our school district, uh, McFarland Unified School District's actually supported Browning Road Steam Academy, where they actually have one of the only fab labs in the state and the only one at an elementary school. It's I was going to say, you don't find lab. fab labs outside yep. of universities mostly, but no. you guys have got one. Yep, so our elementary kids are actually getting the same work that our high school kids are. 
This is our FFA. Um, this is uh, another our Ag Business Pathway. A lot of these students are involved in our Ag Business Pathway. Uh, this is them at the, I believe that's the Kern County Fair, or that may be the Delano. Yeah, the Delano this was Fair. actually at the Delano yeah. Harvest Fair. Okay. Um, we com compete <laughs> a lot. So our students are, well, they are they're, the they're, right <laughs> they're no stranger to winning um, ribbons and first place awards. We had actually our first time ever, um, some of our students did a speaking contest in Spanish. So they won third place in that um, not too long ago, I'm probably good. a few, few weeks ago actually. Our business pathway is actually led by two teachers, one that used to work in the oil fields and has business experience out in the oil fields, along with another one that worked as a uh, logistics, basically worked on an aircraft carrier for 21 years and took care of all the logistics on an aircraft carrier and now teaches our business pathway courses here at uh, McFarland High School. So one of uh, my jobs is actually to find different workshops, different trips, different um, tours for our students to actually attend to get them a little bit more experience. So this was a really great one that we attended at Bakersfield College and it was a, an etiquette, um, proper etiquette. Even for us, we go to a lot of conferences and trainings and there's just a certain way that you're supposed to eat, that you're supposed to speak, just a proper way to pass the bread and, and things right. like that. And they need to learn these things. Yes. Exactly, right. so we're really big on soft skills. So even learning how to shake a person's hand properly, looking them in the eye when you speak to them, active listening, things like that. And these are skills, you know, we have a lot of business partners that we work with in the professional areas of uh, logistics and, and all these different types of businesses. And they say the one thing that's lacking the most from our students today is their soft skills, the mm -hmm. ability to make eye contact, the ability to understand well, the importance of a first impression and shaking hands and being on time. And they will understand that as they go deeper into what yep. they want to do, but it's nice to have it to start off with also. Exactly. Which you know, is instead why of having, wanna... oh, I could have had that opportunity if I was a little stronger just in, you know, looking at the person or, you know, standing with proper right. prosecutor and things we like that. We want them prepared <laughs> ahead of time. Yes. And I think this is our last area right here, business communication and teamwork. Yeah, we try to teach the students that uh, you're not going to get very far throughout your career if you don't have other people that you can depend on, and that uh, leadership also includes those who are willing to follow, and that uh, you have to be a good leader and provide support to others as well to be able to be successful in the workforce. Well, we learned about a lot of the programs. Mateo, do you have any questions for them while they're here? Um, do you have any new programs coming up? Actually, we do. We have, uh, we've been working with Bakersfield College in the logistics pathway. Uh, that's one that's, uh, if anybody knows logistics, they know that we have a lot of uh, large companies that are moving into the county, and they're going to be working uh, like Ikea and Target and Caterpillar and down by uh, Tejon Ranch. We have a lot more companies coming over the mountain into the valley for logistics uh, to pay less tax brackets, things like that, to be able to ship and receive a lot of their, their supplies. So uh, BC has been working with a lot of the private sector in order to develop a logistics pathway, so our students will be able to take part in the logistics pathway, which is five courses and 18 credits that they'll complete for their certificate through BC. Now, have you had an opportunity yet for students that have gone through these programs and out into the workforce and come back and let you know how they're doing? So or is it still kind of early? It's a little bit early for us. Um, okay. It's a little bit early for us. It's going to take probably two to three years for us to really see the amount of growth. I mean, we can get snapshots at this point. We do have some students who actually have had connections with their parents or their parents' businesses who've walked out building some of those trailers that you saw. Mm -hmm. Those were trailers that they built so that they could put welding machinery onto their trailers to become a welder immediately out of high school. Okay. So um, we do have a lot of kids that have gone right in the workforce, worked as contractors, worked as welders through the industry itself. We have a lot of students that have actually traveled all the way to Texas or Oklahoma. Is it Oklahoma? Yes. For some of their welding class, um, for some of the welding programs. So we do see some success from the CTE, but I assure you there'll be a lot more. Well, I was going to say, it sounds like there's going to be a lot more going on. Yes. Because you guys have Absolutely. a lot of things going on the right now. The rubber's about to McFarland. hit the road. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> so I just wanted to see if we could get a little glimpse of that now. Otherwise, it's going to be coming big time very soon. We do have the highest graduation rate in Kern County. Um, out of the 207 seniors that graduated last year, only 12 of them went into the workforce. 22 of them went into the uh, military, and everybody else went to college or trade school. So that's about 170 students going to college. That's trades. awesome right there. Everything that you guys are doing out there in McFarland. So we do appreciate you taking some time to come and visit us here at Do The Math and let some of the students out there know, hey, these are things going on at other schools or I'm going to be going to McFarland High School pretty soon. And these are some of the things I want to check out when I get there. Absolutely. So once again, thank you for coming in this thank afternoon so and spending a little bit of time it's with us at Do The Math. Once again, we do have phone tutors available until 530. Right now, we'll head out and about and see what they're doing at Panama Elementary. 
Hey, thanks a lot. We're here at Panama School today uh, with a group of fourth graders as part of the ACES program. They're living in the world of division. Two digits, three digits, sometimes even four digits, divided by one. We've had a conversation about the different methods and models they've used to divide, long division, partial product, and so we decided today to put them to a little bit of the test with reasoning and with some other choices that they may not be ready for. So today we're starting things off with an open middle problem. Come on, check it out here. On the board, you may notice we have three boxes, a division symbol, and another single box. Their task is to create a division sentence with the largest quotient possible. Now that's a pretty straightforward task for reasons I'm sure that you can envision when you think about the friendliest types of division. So when we see that groups are starting to pick this up, we're gonna flip the script a little bit. So let's kind of see where they stand here with the numbers that they've chosen. So we see a group here that has decided to take the largest numbers and create a division sentence using solely larger digits. Now there's some that are utilizing uh, the area model to divide as well as uh, long division, but they're going with very large numbers in the hopes that that comes up with a larger quotient. Let's check out another group over here and I think they came to a realization very quickly. So talk to us a little bit about your strategy here uh, to find the largest quotient, because you came up with 987, and that is pretty big. So how did you figure that out? Uh, since you said that we can't use the numbers uh, twice, we just thought of the highest numbers times one to equal the highest number. So you found the largest value to start off with that you could create without repeating a digit. Mm -hmm. So that's 987. And then realizing that any number divided by one is itself, you realize that that is going to be the largest quotient possible. We're going to come back to this group in a moment and flip the script a little bit. But let's go back here and see where we stand as we continue forward here. So we see some very similar uh, connections here with uh, dividing 987 by one. Well, yeah, of course, when you take your largest values and then divide it by one, you're gonna end up with right back where you started. So we have another group that came up with the largest uh, quotient possible. Let's revisit this group one more time before we throw things a little bit upside down here. Okay, so what was your thinking with going with 987 divided by six? The larger it was, then the higher. So if you divide a larger number, does it matter what you're dividing it by to get a larger number? Because 987 is the largest three-digit value you can make. What would happen if you divided this by a smaller value? We might get a, still get a bigger number. It would, you think the number would get bigger as you get smaller values? Yeah. Okay. So then what do you think would happen if you divided it by one? <gasps> we would just get the same, same answer. It could be pretty big, right? Mm -hmm. Almost as big as what you started with. So we all kind of came to the realization that the largest values possible divided by one would end up with the largest quotient possible, 987 divided by one. Now, we gave a little bit of a prize to the group that came up with the largest and ended up with a three-way tie. So, I'm gonna go ahead and throw a little bit of a challenge here. This is gonna be the tiebreaker, okay? Same idea. Now, your task is to come up with the three digits and the one digit, same rules. You can only use a single digit once, but now you need to come up with the smallest quotient possible. There are some squeeze happening here. And some ideas, some sparks flying. Smallest quotient possible, open middle. Go for it. Some interesting connections being made with some of these groups as they have a conversation. If we have a large quotient, if we have a large um, divisor and a small dividend, we're going to get a large quotient. So then what are the tools that are going to allow us to have a smaller quotient? What do we need to do with our divisor and dividends and the values that we use to build this? We're going to let these teams play around with this a little bit. 
because there's a really rich conversation happening across this room with all three of our groups. Some might argue it's a math debate, others might classify it as a fight. All I know is that it is lively. We're gonna let this happen, we're gonna let it breathe. When we come back, we'll get into some of the products of these conversations and see where they've taken this journey as the path to the prize grows at Panama. But for now, we're gonna go ahead and send it right back to our studio and give everybody here a chance to really talk it out. Mike, take it away. All right, thanks for that, Devin. Thanks to the students out at Panama Elementary, home of the Yellow Jackets. In studio, we have one of the students from Zephyr Lane. Why don't you, you know what, did you even tell everybody where you went to school? Um, and what grade you're in? I'm in sixth grade and I went to Zephyr Lane. I'm, I, I am in Zephyr Lane. How long have you been there? <laughs> um, four years. So you've been there four years. Pretty comfortable? Yep. How do you get along with the principal? Pretty well. Pretty well. Do you think you could go into the principal and say, hey, listen, you know, I've been here for four years and I uh, would like a little input on uh, something around the school. <laughs> I would like one thing to be changed. Um, is there one is thing you would change at your school? If I could, um, maybe that people wouldn't litter as much. Well, there you go. So you could set up a little program, maybe help something out, right? Mm -hmm. that sounds like a good plan. Next plan, over there, young man. <laughs> All right, we're going to take board. a look at the problem. This is one of your homework assignments. A carpenter has a wooden stick that is 84 centimeters long. She cuts off 25% from the end of the stick. Then she cuts the remaining stick into six equal pieces. Ooh, we got all kinds of How stuff long right. is each of those pieces? Okay, I think I got all the pieces on there, all the pieces of information anyway. Mateo, what do you want to do on this problem first? I think I will do 84 mm -hmm. over 100 and turn that Where did the 84 over 100 come from? Because 84, 84 centimeters over 100 centimeters, which is one meter. Okay. So 84 over 100 is just, uh, so 84 divided by 2 is Tell four. me a little bit about what you're doing. I really like the, the math you're doing I here. You're dividing it by 2. Why is that? So I can do this and then... I have... Gotcha. But again, tell me a little bit about why you're, why you're dividing it by two. Why are you doing that? So I can... I'm dividing it by two so I can cut it in half and then half again to simplify it. You're simplifying the fraction. Gotcha. Okay. I just wanted to understand what was going on here. So you divided this by two and you got 42. What happens if you divide 100 by two? 50. Good. You're going to do it again? Yes. Okay. So 42 divided by 2. Divided by 2. 2, 4, 0. Good. You're pretty good at dividing there. 2. So that equals 21. Okay. And when it's like that, when they're both odd numbers, then... What's the... Well, we don't have to see the numbers yet. Go ahead and write the numbers up there. What is the so new fraction? 21, 21 over... 25. 25. Where did the 25 come from? The 25 came from cutting 50 in half. Gotcha. Want to make sure we're... Okay, so what are you going to do with this fraction now? 21 over 25. So I think what I'm going to do now, 21 over 25. I'm just going to erase this real quick. And times 25 over 100. Okay, gotcha. Or we can simplify this into 1 fourth. Okay, so you made 25 over 100 into 1 fourth because we know 25 over 100. Go ahead and leave that there. We'd like to see it. 25 is like a quarter, right? Like 25 cents. Good. So you're, what are you doing with these fractions now? You have 1 over 4 and you have 21 over 25. Over 4. What are you doing with them? Oh, you're multiplying them. Okay. 21. Can you tell me why before you do it? Why are you multiplying them? So I can find out how much she cut off. Gotcha. Okay. Go ahead. Let's see what you get. That was 1. That's actually 21. 1 times 21 is 21. Over Good. 100. Yeah, 21 over 100. Wow. Hmm. So what does that do for us? Now we know that there is 21, no wait, that the 25, that the 25% off uh, cut it, cut
cut 21 off. 21 okay. out of 100 of 84. Gotcha. Boy, that's a lot of math to do, but I think that you're exactly on the right track here. So you had 84, and you're telling me now we need to cut 21 centimeters off, right? Can you show that part? 21. There you go. So We're subtracting. I'm going to go ahead and erase three. this just so we don't get confused about a decimal. Good. Yeah. That turns into a 3, and that turns into a 6. Okay, so tell me, tell me about 63. What is it again? 63 is 25% off of 84. Good for you. I really like how you said that. Good job using those words there. So we have cut this down. Now we're at 63, right? Mm -hmm. 63 centimeters. Okay, so now what's our last step here? We've done this part. Check. And we have one more step to do. The remaining part, which is 63. We will divide 63. Let me give you a little bit more room and you can spread out, okay? We'll divide 63. By? By six, because that's how many pieces there are. That makes sense. Okay. So that's a one, mm -hmm. and that turns into a zero after I subtract gotcha. it. Gotcha. One times six is six, and oh, a zero no, remainder. Oh, no, but look what we have here. What do we have here? It won't go into that. Okay, so, so we six, put a, hold on, hold on a second. Six doesn't go into three, so you put the zero up there. I got you. Okay, so now you got a decimal? Yeah. Good. And then I add a zero to the end of it, mm -hmm. so... Now that becomes a 30. Good, so you drop that down there. And then turn that into a 5. So 10.5 after, since 6 times 5 equals 30. Gotcha. Wow, well done so there. Okay, so 10.5 what? 10.5 centimeters. For each piece, right? Uh-huh. 10.5 centimeters for each piece. And then that was after we already took 25% off. Uh -huh. So it had multiple steps there, and I like the way that you did those fractions there, and at the very end you had to divide it into six pieces. Here's the last question I have for you. If you want to divide a stick into six pieces, how many actual cuts do you need to make? Five. That's right. You got it. Always one less, right? Because that last cut, when you have one piece, makes two pieces. Yeah. That's it. So you're going to cut it in five. You make five cuts, each of them 10.5. There you go. Five. Nicely yeah. done. Great problem, Mateo. And for your efforts right there, we'll reward you with a meal courtesy of our friends at Chick-fil-A. So congratulations on that. And we'll be back with more right after this. Today we're at Norris Elementary School, home of the Squires, and we're here to... All right, we've got sixth grade students at Norris Elementary School working with pentominoes, and time now for your next problem to do, okay? So, we saw about how shapes can be congruent, right? They have to be the same shape, same size, right? And then those are congruent. We can see how you could use different pieces, different pentominoes, to make the same dimensions, a three by five. Now, you're going to have to use a certain number of pentominoes. It could be different for every one of you to fill in the shape that you receive. Are you ready? Are you sure you're ready? <laughs> this is not gonna be easy. This is very difficult. Do you think you have mastered the pentominoes? Mm, maybe. All right, let's give it a shot. All right. You have two sides. You may choose which side you'd like to do. You have two sides. You may choose which side you'd like to do. Okay. Would you like the choice? Ooh, that looks like a difficult one, but it's up to you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and these are just coming at it random. All right. Do you like that side? Or do you like that side? <laughs> the choice is yours. That's too easy. <laughs> you better do that side. Oh, and look at this. That's too easy. You better do that side. All right. You have your challenge. You have your 12 pieces. Start going ahead. Work on those. See if you can make those pentominoes fit in your designated area. You think you'll get it the first time? Yeah. Probably not, right? But they'll all fit. Some will use all 12. Some may only need a few. And that's not the bell for you guys to be finished yet. 
you have more time. All right, good, so you've completed yours. Nicely done. How many pieces do you need? Three. Three, that was an easy one, right? Be done with that. Now let's do that side. Now remember, they have to fit perfectly. You can't have any overlapping, none going outside of the figure, and no empty spaces. Nicely done. This is going by the wayside now. Try that side. Here's your pencil to you later on. That's a difficult one, isn't it? Because right? you've got those shaded areas right there. If you want to, after a little while, if you get too frustrated with one side, all of you, if you're like, you know what, I just can't get this one right now, you can flip over the other side and try that one also. But see, this is a different type of math, right? Because you guys aren't adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing numbers right now. You're working with shapes. When you're working with shapes, what area of math would this be, do you guys know? Like if you're working with squares, rectangles, circles, triangles, you guys ever heard of geometry? Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> so this is a little something you would do during that. Oh, there we go. Nicely done. There you go. Perfect. All right, you want to try the other side now? Why not? All right, and there we go. We've got students at Norris Elementary School, sixth grade, working with pentominoes and an introduction to geometry. And once again, a big thanks to the students at Norris Elementary. In studio, we have Mateo, a sixth grade student from Zephyr Lane, and we do have phone tutors available until 5.30. We'll get to one of the phone calls in just a moment, but we do have another opportunity to head out live to Panama Elementary and visit with Devin. Hey, thanks a lot, Mike, back here at Panama, and uh, the conversation has not stopped one moment until they heard me start talking to you. But the same level of debate and discussion and uh, check-in has not diminished at all since leaving our kids here, our fourth graders at the ACES program. Just as a refresher, we had an open middle challenge for our three groups here, with three digits divided by one digit, using only the digits one through nine, one time each, come up with a division sentence that gives us the smallest quotient possible. Right now, we're gonna check in with the groups to see what they came up with and to kind of talk about their conversations on where they started. So we're gonna start off over here in the front so, ladies, we've had a chance to listen in on some of the conversation. It's been wonderful to see, like, the level of enthusiasm and engagement that you've had. What is uh, a division sentence that you've come up with that has given you the smallest quotient so far? 123 divided by 5. 123 divided by 5. Let me go ahead and just make sure I get that down. So, how did you ultimately get around to 123 divided by 5? We try. We were just trying a lot of different, different strategies okay. to try to get to the smallest quotient. So then we ended up changing numbers, and that's how we got it. So you started off with small numbers and kind of played around with where to put them to get up with something uh, as small as possible. So and that's what ultimately took you to 123 divided by five. Because I see that you had 123 divided by four, and when you brought five in, it got you to something smaller, right? That's really interesting. And I want to get back to that in a moment, okay? I want to jump in on this table over here and see what we came up with. So what was the division sentence that we came up with? Go ahead and tell us. Um, this, this strategy was Jaime's strategy, and he thought, and he wanted us to follow this strategy. 
Okay, so your division sentence is 134. No, it was um, one, 123 divided by um, 9. 123 divided by 9. Okay, yeah. tell us a little bit about 123 divided by 9. As How did you get to that realization? Uh, it's because I thought um, the smallest number would, um, with the biggest dividend, um, would give it the smallest digit. So you wanted to start off with the smallest possible um, divisor, and then you realize if I divide it by larger numbers, I'm going to have fewer in each group that I create from that. Yeah. So I have to not just create the smallest starting number, but a large uh, divisor as possible to create that quotient that I'm looking for. That's a really interesting approach. I want to jump back in here with our group here. What was the division sentence that this group came up with here? One, two, six divided by three, but now I'm trying to find all the multiples Ooh. of 126 divided by something, but it kind of backfired. Well, no, I think what it ended up leading to was a, a strategy where you came to the realization that when you divide it by larger numbers, you get smaller quotients, right? You said, you said that we can't use the same number in yes. here or here, right? So you can't use the same digit twice in the same division sentence. Well, 126 divided by 6, that backfired on me. And right. 126 divided by 12 also backfired on me. So you, in addition to seeking the smallest quotient, you wanted to seek the smallest whole number. You didn't want to have any remainders in seeking yours. I don't know if that was a part of it. I think that if you do have remainders that that still qualifies as a smaller number. So for example, we had a group come up with 123 divided by 9. Let's see, you guys came up with 126 divided by 9 and got 14? Okay, so let's check out 123 divided by 9. So very quickly, I wanted to jump in and share some of the results with uh, uh, the rest of the class. 126 divided by 9 for our back group, they discovered that that was about 14. When you did 120, have you, have you calculated 123 divided by 5 to figure out what that is? Well, what did you get for that? We got 24 remainder 3. 24 remainder 3, that's interesting. Um, remainder 3, now what we really mean by remainder 3 is that there's 3 left in that last group of 5, right? So another way to represent that is 24. Oh, you guys have the purple here. 24 with 3 out of the last 5, or 24 and 3 fifths, right? So let's look at 123 divided by 9. And I'm going to go ahead, forgive me, world, I'm going to use long division on this. 123 divided by 9. I have 9 into this 12 once. I'll subtract that for 3 bring a 3 down, 9 into 33, I know it can get to 27 with 3 times, and I'll have 6 remaining. So, this ends up being 13 and 6 ninths, and I know I can simplify that to 13 and 2 thirds, however, with our group in the back that did 126 divided by 9, this might very well be the smallest whole number quotient, but 13 and 6 ninths does end up being a third less than 14. So to our group here in the front with 123 divided by 9, congratulations, you've won our prizes. I also want to commend all of our groups to coming to an understanding about division. When you have larger divisors and smaller dividends, you end up with larger quotients. But when you have smaller divisors, and larger dividends, you end up with even smaller quotients. So a really interesting exploration about how to play around with division using just four empty boxes. When we come back, I've got a little bit of the holiday sprinkle and magic I'm going to share with my group here while bringing in some multiplication and division understanding. For now, we're going to send it right back to the studio. Mike, take it away. All right, thanks for that, Devin. And once again, thanks to the staff and students at Panama Elementary. Well, we do have a couple of phone calls to get to. First of all, Mackenzie, a fifth grade student at Stockdale. So, Mackenzie, if you're viewing the program right now, we need you to give us a phone call back because obviously something's going on with the phone number. So, Mackenzie, a fifth grade student from Stockdale, if you can phone us. Once again, we can get that phone number uh, 
figure it out and get it back to you. Right now, from Whitley Elementary, Faith, how are you today? Good. What grade are you in? Six. All right. As soon as you're ready, let's hear the math problem you're working on. Um, the math problem that I'm working on is coordinate plane. Oh, coordinate plane. Okay. What are we going to do on a coordinate plane? Um, you, uh, find, you find where the responding of the civic center. We want to put some points on the coordinate plane? Yeah. Okay. What kind of points do you want to put on there? Do you have a couple of points you want to specifically locate? Um, the question is, Gina draws a map of her town on the coordinate plane. Okay. The point, the, the point that represents the town civic center is one unit to the right. Okay. After the origin and four units above it, what are the coordinates of the point representing the civic center? Gotcha. I like that question a lot. So I've drawn a little coordinate plane here, and you said one unit to the right, one, yeah. and four units above the zero, right? Four, three, two, one. So can you express this point, this dot that I've drawn here, which represents the town, can you express that as a point with one number first, and then a comma, and then another number after that, and that'll be wrapped in parentheses. How would you write that down, Faith? One, four. Okay, one, four. How did you know the one went first? Because it was first in the question. It was first in the question. And also remember that X comes before Y in the alphabet, so you always have to move along the X axis first and then up to the Y. Is there any other part of your question you need answered? Um, no. That's what it. All right, yeah. good. I like that question. That's a good one. It's a good physical and picture representation of what's going on there. Thanks for the question. Appreciate it. Nicely done, Faith. And for that phone call, you've got yourself a couple of tickets to Holiday Lights at Com. It's that easy. We do have phone tutors available until 530, and hopefully Mackenzie gets back to us. But in the meantime, young man, it is time for you to get back to work. You ready? Yep. Over to the board. Yay. Yay. All right. We're going to give you about three minutes, maybe. Well, we'll see. Because if Mackenzie doesn't call, you've got all this time. <laughs> all right. So, Scott, if you would, four fours on the board. Now, Mateo, there are many things you can do with numbers. You can add, subtract, multiply, and divide. You're familiar with all of those, correct? Mm -hmm. All right. There are other things that you can do with them as well, as far as grouping them in certain ways, and other mathematical symbols you can put with numbers, such as decimal points, factorial symbols. And you might go, well, I don't know what you're quite talking about with all that stuff yet, but we'll see if any of it comes into play. I would like you to select a number between 2 and 9. I'm thinking good about 5. 5? So we're going to make all of those equal to 5. So here are the rules of the game. You have to use all four fours. You can't use only 3 or 2, and you can't add any other numbers. You must use all four fours so that when they all are combined, in whatever way you want to do it, it all comes out to equal 5. All right, Mateo, what are you thinking here? Even if you're not writing, tell us what you're thinking. I'm thinking I should put a plus here first. Okay. So it's 4 plus 4 equals 8. So far we have 8. Okay. Or should I, I'm thinking I should change it to a times. Okay, we can do that too. So, so it's you really wanted to get big quickly, huh? 16. Okay, 16. Minus 4. Okay, what's 16 minus 4? 16 minus 4 is... I actually have an idea. Tell me what 16 minus 4 is first. Your brain's working overtime. I like it. I like how you're thinking there. So we got 4 times 4 is 16. Minus 4 is? 12. 12. And with that other 4, it's going to be hard to get back to 5, right? Uh, what are you thinking about doing? It's actually hard. It is. It takes a little bit of thought, huh? Maybe. I'm thinking. You can change whatever you like. Sure. Put whatever you want there. But again, tell us a little bit about what you're thinking in your head so we can kind of understand the thought process. I'm thinking about doing dividing so it turns into a one. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Plus that, yep. but so I know it won't work. Now you have five though, right? Because four divided by four is one, plus four is five. 
wish we could get rid of that other one, but we can't. We have to use all four. But I like the way you're thinking there, because you definitely got there. You just got there too soon. Hmm. hmm. You have definitely, from what I can see, you've definitely used all the um, operations that you're going to need. I'm thinking plus, okay. plus, so that's four, eight, four six. Four plus four is eight. 12 and then 16. Uh-huh, 12 and 16, that's a little bit too much, right? So, I'm thinking first dividing. Okay, you got that one there, four divided times, by four. Times. Yep. So four divided by four. One. Is one. One times four. Actually, wait a second. Multiply first. Okay, we're back to multiply. Multiply. I like this problem, you get a lot of thinking in going on there. So four times four is 16, <coughs> what's next? Mm. Now you tried subtraction here before. I like this multiply. You subtract subtraction first. What else can you do there instead 16. of subtraction? Ooh. Ooh. Plus. Plus. Okay. So four times four. Again, tell Divided us what's happening. Hold on. Tell us what's happening. Four times four is sixteen. Plus four. Twenty. Twenty divided by four. Five. Gotcha. Now make sure that your problem that you put up here follows the order of operations. Except the what would you do first if you were doing order of operations? Don't add anything yet. You do multiply first, right? So that's 16. And then what would you do? Oh, no. Just tell me what you do. You don't have to tell me any numbers. The first thing you would do is multiply. 16. The next thing you would do is? 1. Divide, right? Yeah. And then the last thing you do is add. So 16 plus 1 is 17. But that's not what you said. So can you put some grouping symbols up here to make sure we do it in a row? No, no, keep, keep the signs. The signs are great because the, your thinking is wonderful on this problem. But we have to make sure we put some grouping symbols around to make sure something Ooh, is done I first, right? about parentheses? Parentheses, yeah. So Can you do that for us? Four times four. Mm -hmm. And then this. Okay, let's see what happens. Ready? Four times four is 16. Four divided by four is one. 16 plus one is not five. Oops. Oops, ah. okay. And you guys are very close, so what's gonna happen is I'm gonna let you continue working on the grouping right there because we have one final opportunity to head back on out to Panama Elementary and see how they're doing with Devin. Hey, thanks a lot. Welcome back to Panama School. Uh, we're here with this wonderful group of fourth graders. Very insightful, very engaged, very collaborative. And you know, they were so helpful with each other, then the conversation level was so rich that I figured I would recruit them with help with one of my tasks that I have around the holiday season. So uh, every year my family puts together uh, a calendar for the days leading up to uh, December 25th. 25 days of giving, 25 days each day, an act of giving or kindness or thoughtfulness to help us reach out to help those around us in our community here locally and abroad. And these could be things like reaching out and contributing to a Teacher's Donor Choose campaign, or it can be as straightforward and simple as giving random compliments to five people. It could be as forward thinking as buying a cup of coffee for the person behind you in the drive through line and seeing if they buy it for the person behind them and seeing how long it goes. So I built this calendar and didn't realize that I'd be here today. So I looked to see what my task was for today. And my task, I did this to myself, was to give holiday treats to 100 people. I may have a problem. I don't see 100 people in this room. However, I could think about ways to distribute 100 in a lot of different ways. And that's what I hope we can explore here today, looking at the number 100. This is a group that's been exploring multiplication and division. And it's always good to kind of go back and play around with how those numbers kind of come together. And 100 is a very powerful number to play around with. So I wanted to kind of brainstorm here. What's one way we could multiply and get to 100? I'm just going to throw that out there. One way to multiply to get to 100. Go for it. Uh, five, no, uh, 20 times 5. 20 times 5. I can do 20 times 5. So I'm going to go ahead and represent this as people and the second value is going to represent the pieces of candy they get. So I can find 20 people and give them five pieces each. That's one way I could do it. What I'd like you to do is come up with as many different combinations and ways I could get to 100 as possible. Oh, that's easy. 
Go ahead and write those down, and let's see how many we can come up with in one minute. Go for it. Well, we can do the reverse. If you can represent it with division as well, that's wonderful. So you can say 100 divided by something equals something. You sure could represent it with addition. Absolutely. That's one. Can you come up with as many as possible in the next minute? OK? Now here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make this a group activity. When you come up with one, I would like for you to run up to the board, write it up there. Oh, they're going, everybody. Roll, duck, get out of the way. Woo, ah, it's terrible. Maybe I could have been a little more tactful with that, but how often do you see kids running up to the board to write math expressions? I'm going to take that every single day. Now, we're seeing some duplicates here. Try to come up with ones that have not been put up on the board yet. Hey, Charles, you copied mine. No, I did You shared thoughtful ideas, which means you both have excellent ideas oh. together. Ideas don't get stolen, they get borrowed. Excuse me, do you want to get our homework back? We're also seeing different representations of the same ideas using addition as well as uh, a division. Repeated addition, also a very powerful and um, helpful way to make sense of multiplication. I could be very, very generous and say, you know, who's to say that everybody has to have a whole piece of candy? If I wanted to make more people happy, maybe I could take smaller pieces, right? So let's say, for example, I had a half a piece of candy per person. How many people would I have to give candy to in order to get rid of all of my 100 pieces? It would probably be like, well, let's think about it this way. One half, how many halves are in one whole piece? Four. Two, right? Two, right? A half and a half is a whole? So I have two per piece, but I have 100 pieces. So how many half pieces of candy would I be able to give out? 50. Well, that'd be if every person got two. What if every person got one half? 200, right? If I, so I could do, I'm going to go ahead and throw that up here. One half times 200. Hey, if you wanted to do repeated addition, could you do a half plus a half plus a half plus a half 200 times? You could, but you'd be a fool because that would take forever. But math is powerful in that you can represent it so many ways. Now, there's a lot of ways that I'm going to have to consider passing this candy out. And they've made a lot of sense out of 100 and ways to distribute this, as well as ways to be kind of expressive. How would you start off with 500 and then take away 400 pieces of candy from 400 people? You want to tell that to those 400 people? That's up to you. But my hope with this activity is that we consider that generosity and giving can come in a lot of different forms. And so I want to thank everybody here at Panama School for their work today. And I want to be a man of my word and honor them and the spirit of the holidays on this, another 25th day of giving. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for your work today. Mike, I'm going to make sure I save one for you. We'll send it back to the studio. <laughs> what do you mean, save one for me? I need two of those at least right there. Thanks for that, Devin, and the students out of Panama. All right, five seconds. How did you solve that? Um, I solved it by putting brackets. And since PEMDAS E is parentheses exponents multiplication division addition subtraction and that way you solved it by using the brackets and that helped everything out perfectly done and until we meet again continue to do the math Major support for Do The Math has been provided by Chevron, the Kern County Superintendent of Schools, Edison International, Kern Schools Federal Credit Union, California Resources Corporation, Bakersfield West Rotary Stroop Family Foundation, Panama Buena Vista Union School District, Bakersfield City School District, 
and the Kern High School District. With additional production assistance provided by these supporters of education in Kern County and throughout the state of California.